In this fluency warm-up, you see several different ways of representing division. I'm going to work with problem 5, and then you'll complete the rest on your own. It says, how many fourths are in 2 and a half? So we're going to split 2 and a half up into sections that are a fourth in size. Now we can change this to an improper fraction. Remember we multiply the whole number with the denominator. Two times two is four, plus one more makes five. But then we're gonna wanna change that division problem into multiplication. So we will leave, change, and change the second fraction by flipping it over. 5 times 4 is 20 on the top, 2 times 1 is 2 on the bottom, and 2 fits into 20 exactly 10 times. Use these strategies to help you answer the remaining questions. We're going to use that concept of ratios and unit rates to help us answer a focus question. The focus question we're going to try and answer today is how long will it take to reach the finish line? Let's watch the video again to collect information. We see that the finish line is at 100 meters. She crosses this section at about five and a half seconds. That was four meters. Then at this next mark, we're at about eleven and a half seconds. Ten meters. Fourteen meters is at about sixteen seconds. So now we have data collected that the finish line is at a hundred meters and some different intervals of time. We can start by trying to figure out how fast this person is going. Their speed would be me measured in meters per second. That tells us that we take the meters and we divide by the seconds. Now, we don't know for sure if this is a proportional relationship or if she has the same unit rate throughout the whole race. So let's check several different ones of those data values to figure out if she is moving at a constant rate. This first one comes out to 0.72 and it keeps on going. So we're gonna use that repeating line to indicate that the seven and two repeats. So 0 0.727272, but we can round that and say it's approximately 0 0.73. Let's check the next one. If we take 10 and divide by 11.5, we end up with 0 0.869 and it continues on 
It doesn't repeat though, but we can approximate this as 0 0.87. And the last one, 14 divided by 16 is 0 0.875. So we can approximate that as 0 0.88. The 5 makes the 7 go up. The 9 makes the 6 go up. So it is not a constant rate. You can see that she travels different speeds at different times throughout the race. We will have to make some kind of assumption in order to approximate how long it's going to take her to complete the race. So since I have values between 0 0.73 and 0 0.88, I might say that she typically has a speed of about 0 0.81 or 82, somewhere in the middle of those values. Sometimes she's going to go slower, sometimes she's going to go faster, but she'll be around 0 0.81 meters per second. Now, we know that there's 100 meters in the race, and we know that she goes about 0 0.81 meters per second and she needs to complete 100 meters. So if we were to write the ratio, it would say 0 0.81 to one second. And we want the meters to be 100 meters. So how many seconds would it take? We can work backwards to try and figure this out. If I divide 100 by 0 0.81, that can help me figure out how many seconds it's going to take. And it continues on, but the Five is followed by a six, so it rounds up. And we would approximate that it's going to take her 123.46 seconds, or about 123 and a half seconds. You can see that the seconds is more than the meters. 16 is more than 14. 11 and a half is more than 10. So it makes sense for this number to be larger than 100. Before we find out if we were correct, we're going to look at two people in a handstand race. And so our focus question for this is going to be, who do you think will win the race? Let's watch the next clip and collect some data. Let's see what we know about person one. Person one didn't seem to fall as often as person two, so we can say that person two falls during the race. But I believe person one was more consistent. We didn't see her fall in the video. Person one didn't seem to be as fast, but she was more consistent. Do you think that all of the falls that person two takes will impact whether she wins or loses? Make a prediction about who you think is going to win. In this one, we don't have intervals of time for either of them.
So this one is just based on some assumptions that you might be making. Is person two always faster? How many times do you think they're going to fall during the race? Will person one ever fall, even if we didn't see her fall during the video? Will she pick up speed? Will she stay the same speed throughout the race? Make a prediction and then we'll watch the next clip. We see that person one wins the race, and person one completed it in 2 minutes and 7.655 seconds. We said it was going to take her 123.46 seconds. So were we close? A minute has 60 seconds. So 2 minutes, 60 times 2 is 120 seconds. So if she took 2 minutes and 7.655 seconds, that means her time to complete the race was 127.655 seconds. Our prediction was 123.46 seconds. So were we close? Yes, that difference might just be that she was a little bit slower or faster at certain points during the race. Maybe she fell once during the race. We're only a few seconds off from our prediction. So using those ratios or those time intervals helps us to determine an approximation for how long it will take her. But we have to make some assumptions, which means that we won't be exact in our answer. Think about how we use those proportional relationships and ratios to find unit rates and how that helped us determine how long it would take her to cross the finish line. This is the end of this lesson. Go ahead and check back on the YouTube playlist for more.